tonight on Nate Newswatch. Advocates want to bring a bike share program to Edmonton. It's basically so much easier to get around and interact with the city at, from a street level. The Alberta Party welcomes a new leader. Do things that help Albertans and build a much more broad base and, and future driven province. And the city of Edmonton has lifted the ban on combat sports. I find that boxing, MMA, and wrestling shouldn't have even been on it. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. Enjoying Edmonton's bike lanes might soon be available to everyone, even if you don't own a bike. A new advocacy group wants to introduce a bike share program to Edmonton. Our Isabel Lumsden joins us live from the South Lobby with more on that story. Thanks guys. After seeing the success of bike share programs all across Canada and even across the world, Bike Share Alberta decided it was time to bring one home to Edmonton. A bike share program in Edmonton would mean Edmontonians could get from point A to B while reducing their carbon footprint. I've been working away out of town for the last three weeks, so I got back, it's nice out. Perfect time to bike. This is Ernest Paltrevsky's happy place on his bike pedaling around Edmonton. Paltrevsky is excited to hear he may soon be sharing the trails with new bikers. You can just go rent one and bike around and have fun and enjoy the city more. Canada is home to over 10 bike share programs and Edmonton may be the newest addition. Tim Quarengesser is the co-founder of Bike Share Alberta, an advocacy group working to bring the concept to Edmonton. You open up an app, you see where the, 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 the bike is on the map and you book it. And uh, um, typically it's a half hour trip to incentivize short trips, but you can book them for longer. This program helps raise the use of bike lanes, even for people who don't own bikes, as well as reduces congestion and CO2 emissions in our city. The bikes themselves are dockless, meaning they can be locked to anything and are built to deter thieves. It has a GPS and other tech that allows you to see where it is. If someone takes it, you can follow it, uh, you can go retrieve it. Uh, they're even built with non-standard parts, so uh, if you take it apart and try to sell those parts, no one wants them because they don't fit on other bikes. As for Pal Trefsky, he knows the perks of owning his own bike and believes everyone should have the same opportunity. It's very convenient because you can drop it off wherever and pick up a new one wherever you are. If you go for dinner after and you're far from where you left your bike, it's perfect to do that. Surprisingly, Edmonton is one of the largest Canadian cities without a bike share program. Isabel, how much would it cost to ride a bike through the, through the bike share program? Well, that will depend on the business that they get to run the program in Edmonton. It could be as low as $1 for a 30-minute trip, or it could be a monthly subscription of $70 to $90, which could equal less than a dollar per trip if you use the bike share program a lot. When will the bike share program be up and running? Well, there's no official start date yet. They're still in the startup process. Um, as of right now, they are talking to the municipal, provincial and federal governments to try to get funds to make it a go. But for now, they just need to wait for the funding and also look for different businesses that will be right for a bike share program in Edmonton. Perfect. Thanks, Isabel. That's Isabel Lumsden reporting live from the South Lobby. A list of the province's top 70 employers was released. It included many recognizable names like airlines, banks, and even energy companies. And for the seventh year in a row, Nate was named as a top employer in our province. Our Brendan Collins joins us from the Cap Building with more on that story. Thanks guys. Nate has once again been named a top employer in the province. This year being recognized for participating in Pride Week, celebrating the diversity of its employees, having flexible work schedules and promoting the health and well-being of its workers. I think that Nate does an excellent job of making this a fabulous place to work. Teresa Sturgis is a marketing instructor at Nate who feels passionate about her job educating young people. I, I work with students all day and they're at a very interesting time in their lives. They're trying to you know, figure out what they want to do with their careers and I get to be part of that. I, uh, that is rewarding. Not only does she find her job rewarding, she appreciates some of the extra perks. 
I'm personally um, a triathlete, so I love all the facilities here. I love that I have a pool that I can enjoy and a fitness facility. Alberta's Top 70 Employers is an annual competition recognizing 70 exceptional places to work. Some of the benefits that winning employers are being recognized for include offering generous vacation time, family-friendly incentives, and flexible work schedules. You need to be a good employer, which means treating your employees the way you would want to be treated. Uh, there are lots of people that apply for a top uh, employer award that uh, maybe have checked a checkbox or have put in the programs but really haven't done everything they need to do for their employees. Uh, the employees will make and break you. As for Teresa, while she loves the perks, she says it's the community that makes her days great. It takes a community to do it. I mean, I'm one instructor. There are many others that the students touch, but, you know, it goes to the management, it goes to the people that are working in the halls and after hours, that everyone has a part to play. And now, Nate isn't the only post-secondary school to make the list. Others include SAIT, the University of Calgary, and Lakeland College Vermilion. To see the full list of the top 70 employers in Alberta, check out www.canadastop100.com. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Brendan. That's Brendan Collins reporting from the Cap Building. You're watching Nate News Watch, the next generation of news. He used to be Edmonton's mayor, and now he's settling into his new job as the leader of the Alberta Party. <laughs> Stephen Mandel won the popular vote on Tuesday, two thirds of the votes over his competitors, Cara Levis and Rick Fraser. Although Mandel is looking forward to representing the Alberta Party in the 2019 election, he says they still have a busy year ahead of them. Move the party forward. We've uh, got a lot of work to do, but I know the party's up to it and uh, developing some good, strong policies that make Albertans feel comfortable with a great vision for the province. Up until the 2019 election, Mandel says he wants to focus on meeting people and touring the province. We're still weeks away from spring, but the province is already putting together its wild, wildfire response plan to the test. Albertans want to know that when a disaster strikes, their government will be there to respond. The province gave the media a tour of its emergency centre. Officials say that the emergency management season is just around the corner and demonstrated a wildfire simulation, saying it's one of the best ways to prepare for all kinds of disasters. The reason we are using a wildfire scenario is because a wildfire scenario, as you probably already know, it is very dynamic, it is very fluid, they're very challenging, uh, and they involve many, many different partners. The Alberta Emergency Alert app can be downloaded to get push notifications to your phone in real emergency situations. Fighters in Edmonton are headed back to the ring after Council lifted its ban on combat sports. The ban was lifted on Tuesday after City Council looked at how they can improve fighter safety. This means that sports like boxing and MMA can now professionally compete, which was welcome news to the fans. I understand why they put on there, but I still feel it should have been on there just because you still have stuff like hockey and football, which is way more dangerous, I feel, than MMA. The city is still calling upon the province to create a province-wide combat sports commission. If you've gotten a call from someone claiming to be from the Canadian Revenue Agency and asking for money, you're not alone. Fraud happened to me, and it could happen to you. Edmonton Police launched Fraud Pre Prevention Month yesterday. They're spending the month telling stories about those who have been affected by popular scams. In 2017, there were 4,630 frauds investigated by the Edmonton Police Service with financial losses in the millions of dollars. Last year, over 100 Edmontonians lost over $300,000 to a CRA scam alone. The City of Edmonton's Change for Climate Community series is underway, and it made a stop at Nate on Tuesday. The young people showcasing your ideas today are the leaders of tomorrow. The event featured junior and senior high school students from Edmonton and around the world, showcasing their ideas on how to address climate change issues. Jasper Place High was chosen as the best presentation from a variety of competitors and their posters. The event wrapped up with a panel discussion on how youth can help move forward in creating change for the climate. Today we want to just lift out 
that youth voice and give these guys uh, a chance to uh, speak about what was truly important to them about climate based on their perspective. The next event in the series is the inaugural Cities and Climate Change Science Conference from March 5th to 7th at the Shaw Conference Centre. Firefighters are resting up after spending four days on the roof of a fire station number two, raising money for muscular dystrophy. The event started 13 years ago to raise awareness and funds to help families across the country affected by neuromuscular dis disorders. The firefighters went on the roof Monday and came down yesterday after passing their goal of $100,000. With limited space, the firefighters had to find ways to pass the time while they were up there. Uh, we got a deck of cards. We've got an old TV and a broken Nintendo, which I'm glad I didn't buy. I was about to. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just talk and enjoy each other's company. It can be tough at times. <laughs> This year, the money that was raised will go toward new wheelchairs for patients suffering from muscular dystrophy. Coming up after the break, you can drink of water energy drinks while studying. So, so we talked to Nate's students who words of warning for those who drink too much. That was kind of why I had to cut it out of my life. I was dying because of it. Coming up in sports, Oops Women's Hockey takes on Red Deer College this weekend, and Don Cherry Night is coming to Rogers Place. And I also get to test my fitness. It's gonna be a smash. If you have plans to leave the city this weekend, you might want to rethink them, as we're expecting a significant amount of snowfall through central Alberta. We have that and more coming up. NR92 is so on fleek. Don't miss out on pancakes, concerts, Tests. Follow NR92 online so you can stay woke, fam. Matt, I gotta tell you, I've been loving the warm weather, but I hear there's a storm coming and uh, I don't like it. I know, I left early for school this morning, hoping to, to beat the storm, right? But we still haven't seen anything, so. What do you got for us, Steve? So we are actually still under the snow um, advisory. Um, we're expecting to get it a bit sooner, but first we take a look at Calgary, which actually has gotten the brunt of the, uh, the snow recently. It's going to be minus 8 tomorrow, minus 15. It, the snow should clear up in the afternoon. We will move on to Jasper. Jasper has uh, it's gotten a little less of the snow. It's going to be seasonable temperatures, so it would be good for skiing. It will be minus 5 and a low of minus 17. On to Fort McMurray. Fort McMurray is actually escaping all of the snow that's hitting central Alberta. Um, it's going to be bright and sunny, but it's going to be a little bit on the brisk side at minus 9 as a high and minus 13 as a low. And then here in Edmonton, we haven't had any of the snow yet, but it should be coming late this evening. And tomorrow, uh, it'll be mi minus 5 as a high and minus 10 as a low. So be prepared um, if you wake up and it's just covered in white snow. Um, our seasonal averages at minus 1 and minus 10, we're about that right now. And the records were high of 12 in 1905 and a low of minus 40 in 1988. And I sure don't want to see that this weekend. Back to you guys. News Watch Weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. If you find yourself reaching for an energy drink, new research says you might want to reconsider. A study of the University of Calgary is making new recommendations. Our Cassandra Hornsby has the details. Uh, two or three weeks ago, I went to the doctor for a physical, and he told me my blood pressure was, like, ridiculous. Seth Henning, a student at Nate, used to drink multiple energy drinks a day, as he felt it helped him pull off all-nighters as a student. Studying. Uh, as a student, it made a huge difference. You didn't have a project to do, it would be due the next day, you'd stay up all night doing it, and energy drinks helped a lot with that. But a visit to the doctor shocked him into changing his ways. Then I went through my habits with him, and he told me that caffeine intake was a big part of that, along with other things. But that was kind of why I had to cut it out of my life. I was dying because of it. A new study out of the University of Calgary is adding weight to widespread concerns about the safety of certain energy drinks. One of its key recommendations is that kids under 18 should not consume the drinks, something Nate dietitian Nick Creelman agrees with. 
The concern with youth under the age of 18 consuming energy drinks is more than just about the caffeine, but as well as about the cocktail of other stimulants, the excessive vitamins that are usually added, as well as a lot of the herbal ingredients that are not really well researched and we don't know what their impact will be specifically on the child demographic. Research shows that the amount of caffeine in a single serving energy drink can exceed Health Canada's guidelines. The study also found that energy drinks are often marketed in a way that is attractive to kids. This is something Henning agrees with and he says he now notices it even more now that he has stopped consuming the drinks. They're right, the first thing you see when you walk into the store. I think that draws people in initially. It was an eventful week in the world of sports and man, those Don Cherry jerseys, I am so looking forward to those. Yeah, I was driving past a, a billboard with them on it and, and it's like literally just a Don Cherry suit on a, on a jersey. It looks awesome. Tony, what do you got for us? Hey guys, we'll have the full look in this week's sports, but first we're going to kick off with some ACAC women's playoff hockey. The Nadukes took on the Red Deer College Queens in a highly anticipated first round matchup, and boy did the series not disappoint the ACAC fans. Let's pick things up in Game 2. There was some nervous energy in the air as the Ooks faithful watched their team drop the opening game of the best of three series on Friday. The Red Deer College Queens sporting the white unis were hoping to place a berth in the ACAC finals. But the Nate Ooks in blue? Yeah, they're having none of it. In the first period, Hannah Fouillard's first goal since November 25th fools Tracy Kikuchi to put the Ooks up 1-0. Then, just a minute later, Brittany Savard provides some breathing room finding a loose puck after a mad scramble. 2-0 Nate. Check out this celebration. Savard, yeah, she is fired up and the Nate Ooks fans are absolutely loving it. After a scoreless second period, the Ooks would ice game two with an absolutely beautiful give and go capped off by the red hot Bircha Kozlova, who actually came into the playoffs with a six game point streak. Carly Fetch had a relatively easy night turning aside 13 shots in her first career ACAC playoff shutout. Ooks captain Carlin Bowie said post game there's nothing like the pressure of playoff hockey. Our backs are against the wall. It is kind of a deer die situation, but uh, but we, we came out and, and when we all play together and play as a whole, like we know how to play, we're dominant and that's exactly what happened on the yesterday. In Game 3, the Red Deer College Queens ended up defeating the Nate Ooks in spectacular fashion. The Ooks came out with a 3-0 lead, but the Queens answered right back with four unanswered goals. With the win, the Queens are set to take on the McEwen University Griffins in the ACAC Final. The Edmonton Oil Kings will be wearing some new jerseys to commemorate a Canadian icon. The goal of the program, number one, is to have fun, is to celebrate all things Don Cherry. On Wednesday, Edmonton Oil Kings players sported Don Cherry-inspired jerseys, which will be worn and auctioned off during tonight's game. The Oil Kings announced all proceeds from jersey sales will go to the Kidney Foundation of Canada. We always like our themed jerseys to support a really meaningful cause. And the awareness of the Kidney Foundation for donation is that, that cause for this. So we're going to be silent auctioning and raffling off these jerseys. And this way every fan in attendance can walk away with something. We're doing Don Cherry bobblehead scratch and wins. We're giving away Don Cherry hockey cards as well at the door. The Edmonton Oil Kings take on the Calgary Hitmen tonight at 7 p.m. The Edmonton Oilers have partnered with the NHL and the Oilers Community Foundation to support one message. Hockey is for everyone. I think Edmontonians and Albertans should be really proud of the leadership uh, from this team. As part of a league-wide initiative, the Edmonton Oilers held a panel of community leaders last week. Panel members included the Honourable Randy Boysenalt, rather, You Can Play Ambassador Dr. Cheryl McDonald, and current Edmonton Oiler forward, Jujar Kara. If I could change one person, I think that's that's huge. You know, it's it's such a strong message we're trying to send out, and you know, I hope I hope it catches on and a lot of people move forward and feel comfortable playing hockey. The Oilers held a hockey is for everyone night versus the Colorado Avalanche on February 22nd and sold limited edition pucks to commemorate the event. All net proceeds supported the Oilers Foundation and You Can Play Project. Edmonton is home to a World Championship final. Red Bull crashed ice's season finale is getting set for next weekend, and Nate Newswatch got a walkthrough of the track. Okay, 
With track construction almost complete, the ice will be layered and completed over the next seven days. According to event producer Patrice Drouin, the track will be faster than Edmonton's 2015 version and may be home to a new world record. This is the Canadian Big Air. What we're trying to do there is to give maximum speed to the athletes so they can register the longest jump ever done on skate. The 455-meter track has a 40-meter vertical drop from start to finish, allowing skaters to reach speeds up to 80 kilometers per hour. That's incredible. For, for tickets to the season finale, visit RedBullCrashedIce.com. From the start to here, there is no break. And for this week's End Zone Challenge, I had the opportunity to train like an Edmonton firefighter. After getting a rundown on the six different exercises available, it was time to suit up. From coveralls to boots, I got started off on the right foot. How do I look? All right, all right. I feel great. So people come in here for about three hours and we run them through a variety of tests that are designed to, to simulate the physical demands of firefighting. Admittedly, I was getting excited at this point. It was time to strap on some final gear and push my physical limits with two of the exercises. So which test did you want to try first? Uh, I'll try the ladder first. Try the ladder first? Yeah. Up and down I went, five times to be exact. And after I finished, it's safe to say that I enjoyed the ladder exercise. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. The next exercise, not so much. I had to pull a hose filled with water down the hallway and let me say, it was not easy. Lean forward, lean forward, that's all right, that's all right. Uh, oh. While I fell just short, my second effort was just enough to get to the black mat. Uh. While it was a tough one, the experience was memorable and it made water taste that much better. You can walk back to the uh, water fountain if you want. Yeah, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> Man, you were chugging out there. You got to tell me, you're a secret firefighter or something? What's going on? You know, I'm not a secret firefighter right now, but I may toss in an application pretty soon. That was awesome. <laughs> so the crash dice, how do you think they clean the track? That's actually a really good question. I, I've actually never even thought about that. Do they like, what if, can you imagine if they had a Zamboni go down the track, <laughs> up and down uh, along those ramps? But uh, hey, maybe we can find out next weekend on March 9th. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we donned some pink shirts and headed to the cat building. We spread kindness and talked to Nate students about the importance of speaking out against bullies. It is very important just because we want people to talk. The key is talking. Coming up in entertainment this week, I checked out some sick rides to the Edmonton Expo Center and I learned what it takes to have pop knowledge just to tell us well of science. All that and more. NR92 brings you all the Nate Ukes coverage you could ask for. NR92 is enough coverage to make you go. Tune in at the top of every hour to hear the latest results, news, and upcoming games. Only on NR92.com. Newswatch clothing provided by Action Air Mold and Asbestos. Newswatch music provided by Martin Mayer Productions. Wednesday was Pink Shirt Day here at Nate in support of anti-bullying. Daryl and I went over to the CAT building to help support and spread awareness for the campaign. Let's get a pen so we can have somebody around the board. So you know what to, um, so it's what you're going to do to take a stance against bullying. Right? Matthew and I asked students to write on a sticky note what they would do to take a stance against bullying and then put them on the board. We also made buttons with anti-bullying messages on them and handed those around to students to help spread awareness. With the evolution of social media, bullying starts even earlier and in more ways than traditional schoolyard bullying. It has evolved for sure from just, like you said, the schoolyard to 24-7, anybody can be bullying you. So we just want to raise that awareness, if you are being bullied, to reach out and get help. PinkShirtDay.ca has raised in excess of $1.8 million for anti-bullying programs in Western Canada since the initiative started back in 2007. I can't believe it's going to be snowing this weekend. Uh, I'm just going to have to find somewhere warm to stay all weekend. Yeah, man. I think I honestly, I'm just going to stay at home and, I don't know, just watch a movie under a nice blanket or something. But maybe there's something better. Odell, you got some for us?
don't worry guys, you can actually escape the snowy weekend by checking out some cool cars at the Empton Expo Center. I got a little behind the scenes look as car enthusiasts gear for a crazy weekend. With just under, just, with just under 200 cars rolling in, Shelly Ostrove says it's worth every second of your time. If you're planning to come, come early and bring a camera and expect to stay here for a couple of hours if you want to see uh, all the cars and maybe talk to some of the exhibitors. The 50th annual event is commonly known as the greatest car show on earth. The show will be here until Sunday before they pack up and head to the next location in Chicago. A festival that features women in the arts is just a few days away. With the media launch of the Skirt Safari Festival at the Nina Gallery this Monday, I got a sneak preview of what is to come. Artist work of, artist, artistic work of women in all forms and such as dancing, poetry, fashion, singing, and some quite interesting sculptures. You know, part of the reason we started this festival was because we weren't seeing enough of women's work on our stages. And um, that's still a problem. That's still a problem in this province and in this country. However, I feel like things are changing. The 40 long festival begins on Thursday at various venues all along Warrenteeth Avenue. A new exhibit opens up for the very first debut in Edmonton. Hi everybody, I'm Baxter and welcome to Popnology and the Tell Us World of Science. Popnology displays to us how science fiction from yesterday became a reality of today. The exhibit teaches us the history of movies, books and television to how innovators use those in the helping of new technology. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm afraid I can't do that. HAL 9000 and the DeLorean Time Machine are just some of the interesting artifacts on display. The exhibit runs until May 6th, so no need to worry, I still have plenty of time to go and check it out. And that's when you look at entertainment for this week. Back to you guys. Thanks for watching Nate News Watch. We'll see you next time.